Hello and welcome to the Lancaster Hi-Fi YouTube channel. It's been a while since I made a video. I had a little foot surgery and that uh, kind of set me back. I'd like to do a video today about tuning a tube amplifier. I'm building this tube amp based on a design by Morgan Jones. It calls for 320 volts on the B+, a regulated 285 volt supply to the input and phase splitter triodes. I'm building the amp on this Magnavox 9300 chassis. Its power transformer is not capable of producing the power demanded by the amplifier. That is, according to Morgan Jones design, each of these output pentodes, 6BQ5s, otherwise known as EL84s, has a bias current of 40 milliamps. But this power transformer is rated for only 175 milliamps. That's what I hear from people on audiokarma.org who have been helping me with this problem. Well, 40 times 4 is 160, should be capable of that, but the biasing on the triodes requires another 16.6 and so, you know, that's maybe just, eh, it's just in there, but what I found is that if I bias it with the resistor values that Morgan Jones calls for in his design, the B plus goes too low for the regulated supply to stay in regulation. The resistors on the regulator are set to produce 285 volts regulated output. And the specs on the regulator say you need at least 12 volts above that on the input to stay in in regulation. So that means if I've got 285 volts on the output, I need at least 297 volts on the input. Here's the other problem. If the bias current on the output pentodes is too low, then I start producing crossover distortion before I reach clipping distortion. And crossover distortion sounds a lot worse than clipping distortion. We tend to not mind at least the early stages of clipping distortion in tube amps, but crossover distortion sounds bloody awful. So now we'll demonstrate what I'm talking about on the scope in a bit. So these are the bias resistors called for by the design. And I've fed them each to one terminal of a pot, a potentiometer, and then the other terminal from the potentiometer goes to ground. And then I'm adjusting the pot in stages 10 or 20 ohms at a time and taking measurements. What's the V plus voltage? What are the voltages on the cathodes of the output tubes? And then what is the maximum power produced by each channel at just before or at the onset of distortion, whether that's crossover distortion or clipping distortion. And again, we would prefer to reach clipping distortion before we reach crossover distortion. So that's a key factor here as well. All right. So right now I've just tested this out at 90 ohms. I previously did it at 80 ohms. I stepped down from 140, 120, 100, and so on. And now I'm trying to zero in on the sweet spot in the amplifier to tune it in just right. And so I just did 90, now I'm gonna do 70. So just gotta eek this down a bit. These are very, these are less than one turn pots. So they're pretty touchy. Okay, 70 ohms. And now for the other channel. It's real touchy in this range. Of course, these are very old pots. I would never use these in a final design or a final build, but 
they're nice to have around for testing purposes. All right, there we go, 70 ohms. Okay, now let's step through the process here. Now, ground this terminal, set measure to volts DC. And I put the other one here on the B plus, and I turn it on. You can see it starts off reaching almost, or even over 400 volts, and then as things kick in, and tubes warm up and so on, it drops. And in this case, I expect it to drop to between 298, 299 volts. It may take a while for it to settle on that final voltage, so I will spare you all that weight. Well, that should be long enough. The amplifier B plus voltage has settled down to 301 volts. And I'm gonna take off this little clip probe, put on my long pokey probe, and look at the cathode voltages for the output tubes. Okay, 10.6, 12.2, 11.6, 10.2. So we're on the right channel right now, and we'll leave it there. We'll change to the scope, turn on the signal here, turn up the volume back here on this little amp, and watch the scope. Now, what I'm plotting here is output on the x on the y axis versus input on the x axis. And I'm going to start turning up the volume on the input. And we should start to see a straight line. There we go. There's our straight line. And you can even hear it now on the heater coil that I'm using. Now, there's our ugly distortion. That we've got Clipping distortion at the end here, a little bit there, and a lot of crossover distortion. I'll show you what that looks like in real life. So here we've got the two waveforms superimposed. Let me move them apart a little bit. So we can see the crossover distortion, the clipping distortion at the top, more at the top than at the bottom. 9.09 .09 volts. What I want to see it so now I'll move these back so they're superimposed. And we'll go back to plotting A versus B. So now I'm going to turn this down until the, the distortion goes away. And look for the sweet spot. So right there you can still see a little crossover distortion. Right about there it's distortion free, at least visibly. So 8.62, let me just creep it up just a nut. Yeah. So you can here see here at 8.79, there's a bit of crossover distortion, just a hint of it. And I'd say here at 8.69, it's looking pretty good. You know, maybe just a hint of distortion, but we'll call that our maximum output at this point. That's for the right channel. I'll do that for the left channel, and I've done that at various values of these resistances here. And in the end, we'll, I'll try to figure out what resistance to put on these cathodes such that the amp operates as well as it can with this power transformer. So far, I've assumed that you're using the best rectifier possible, or that you're stuck with whatever rectifier you already have. In this case, I was using the 5U4 or 5U4GB tube rectifier. I tried two other options. One, pictured here, was to go with the solid-state rectifier. That is, use a couple of diodes instead of a tube rectifier. I needed to add a dropping resistor. In this case, I put two 125 resistors in parallel for 60 ohms to drop it to the 320 or so that I needed for my B+. 
With that solid state rectification, I was able to use the design values for the cathode resistors. In other words, I had the voltage I needed and the power I needed. there are advantages to using tube rectification with a tube amplifier. Specifically, a tube rectifier is better suited to giving tubes the power they need when they want it. Solid state rectifiers all of a sudden give the tubes the full voltage before they're warmed up. Tube rectifiers take some time to warm up, so the other tubes don't get that high voltage all at once before they're ready for it. The rectifier actually called for in the original design was the 5AR4, otherwise known as the GZ34. The 5AR4 uses less power in its heater, warms up more slowly so that the other tubes don't get shocked with high voltage too early, and it drops less voltage so you get more power out of your power transformer. And with the 5AR4 rectifier, I wasn't able to get quite 320 volts, but I was able to get pretty close. I think 315, 317, close enough. And the result is just a wonderful, wonderful amplifier. Thank you.